6.03 on a chilly morning, Tuesday, October the 8th. We're at 52 degrees, warming to around 70 later. Lots of sunshine expected. Good morning. I'm Michelle Bash. And I'm John Aaron. The top local story we're following this hour, hundreds gathered in a northwest D.C. park to honor those who have died in Israel and Gaza in the last year. WTOP's Scott Gelman was there. Here at Meridian Hill Park. Every death is an entire universe destroyed. May their memories each be a blessing. Hundreds of people are wearing white and holding signs that say Palestinian and Jewish safety is intertwined. In front of a banner that says every life a universe, they're praying. May you, who are the source of mercy, shelter them beneath your wings eternally. I want to show that as a Jew, I have enough room in my heart to grieve both the lives that we lost on October 7 and the Palestinians who have suffered collective punishment. Some participants are urging the U.S. to stop sending supplies to Israel. We're spending billions of dollars helping Israel kill babies and mothers and fathers and brothers. In Northwest, Scott Gelman, WTOP News. For some people in D.C. yesterday, the details of that first day of the war are vivid. WTOP's Mike Marillo reports it's because they were in Israel at the time. Boy, a morning. Uh, we didn't know what was happening. We were woken by the sirens. Tim Chakap, Luna, Philadelphia, was in Israel on October the 7th, 2023. He says for hours they didn't know what was going on. But for Hava Tazazu, who now lives in D.C. but lived in Israel last year, says the news came a little quicker for her. I was watching the news and I couldn't believe what I'm seeing. She recalls the fear that ran through her neighborhood as people ran for safety. We are were really in shock. We were running to the shelter. It was a lot of the sirens going on. She describes that day and all that happened as her worst nightmare coming true. Mike Marillo, WTOP News. In other news this morning, food prices remain a top concern for people in Maryland. WTOP's Luke Lukert has more results of a new poll on the state's economy. Over 80% of adults in Maryland are at least somewhat concerned about the cost and availability of housing. According to Redfin, the median house price in the state is about $435,000. According to the University of Maryland Baltimore County poll, three quarters of adults are also concerned about people being unable to find good paying jobs. Overall, about a third of the thousand polled believe Maryland is seeing excellent or good economic conditions. The rest see it as fair or poor. Luke Luger, WTOP News. The poll has a margin of error of plus or minus 3.1 percent. A debate between the two candidates looking to take over the House seat in Maryland that David Trone is stepping away from went just about as smoothly as smoothly as it could until the last three minutes. That's when chaos erupted Sunday at Hood College as both candidates, Democrat April McLean Delaney and Republican Neil Parrott, angrily started talking over each other and jabbing their fingers menacingly in the other's direction. Parrott briefly stormed off the stage as a political science professor, Sarah Malik, sought to restore order. I would like to thank people for remaining civil until five minutes ago. Thank you very much. Parrott returned and did accept Delaney's offer of a handshake. The crowd of about 75 people, mostly students and local political activists, seemed both energized and stunned by what they saw, according to Maryland Matters. The candidates are due to square off again October 16th. Our area is sending more post-hurricane help to North Carolina. Four Fairfax County 911 dispatchers will support emergency communication centers in that state, which were most impacted by Helene. The dispatchers left yesterday along with teams from Loudoun and Prince William counties, as well as Charlottesville and the National Capital Region Incident Management Team. 17 people in all are heading to North Carolina to help. And we'll have traffic and weather in 30 seconds. 